another list. So let's start this out with a smile from my Palaenopsis cornus cervi variety Chatelidae because it is kind of a negative video with some subjects that, well, has anybody ever thought of giving up growing orchids as much as we love them? Honestly, this is gonna be raw, but I have, and I have several reasons why, which I'm going to share with you in this video. So stick around if you like, and see if it resonates with you, if you have similar feelings, and then uh, let's discuss in the comments. In the meantime, if you do stick around for a video like this, it is very much appreciated. So thank you, and let's get to the list of why do I sometimes just want to quit? So one of my first reasons, and actually most importantly, is the fact my own clumsiness. How many years have I been doing this? Will I ever learn? And the answer is no, because I am still snapping off leaves, like with my Lelia regentii here. Beautiful, beautiful little rapiculous Lelia that has grown for me. It's pot bound. And we went through some troubling times. We overcame them together. And then I'm fiddling around with another orchid over to the right while I'm messing around getting sheaths off. And my elbow catches the leaf of this little rapiculous Lelia and promptly snaps off a gorgeous, healthy, chubby leaf. Like that. That is so upsetting. And on top of that, new growth. I have two examples. This is another rapiculous Lelia that I repotted, still very weak, needs all the help it can get, is growing new growths when I was repotting it, three actually, when it got into the new pot. And I broke one off, and it's gonna be difficult to see really, but as an example, underneath this lava rock here was a new growth. I'm now using that space to prop the orchid up because she's not in the pot solid. And in the process of repotting this little new growth down here, it's not progressed, so I must have damaged it as well. And out of three new growths, I have one to show for. On an orchid that is already very weak and needs all the help it can get. And what do I do? I make it worse. My little orange nugget here as well. Goodness me, it has gone through some trials and tribulations, virus suspicions and all that. At the beginning of the season, it was chucking out three new growths at the base here, of which I only have two left because I broke the third one, which was down here. And it was early enough in the season, I thought maybe it will throw out another one, but it didn't. Still, how many times have I repotted something and again, I've broken growths. It's ridiculous. It's frustrating. How about spikes? Now, I only have the Peggy Ruth Carpenter here as an example, simply because she is in bloom and I don't want to make this all about just boohoo and, you know, green foliage and weak plants. But I had a, the first spike that she ever developed. Um, it just shriveled up and died. Granted, I did not break it or snap it. But I have broken and snapped so many spikes, especially Phalaenopsis spikes. And again, how many years have I been doing this? It is so annoying. Anyway, her spike actually um, frazzled up in a freak hot wind. And we'll get to that point as well. So, you know, there are moments in time where I look at myself and I go, what's the point? Which brings me to the next point. Negligence. My next point. Forgetting to water. Pests too busy to check. And assuming everything is fine. Because how many rounds a day do I do with my orchids just because I like to be in their presence, so to speak. I like to look at them. Two, three times a day, maybe more during this past summer, more even. And yet, I didn't 
watered this on sidium enough, the microfiber went dry, and I risked the root system. I didn't water my wildcat enough. The microfiber went dry, and from a rescue plant that I had gotten to superb health, it's gone back into like a semi-rescue. But what's the point of that? It's ridiculous. That's what I'm thinking when I'm like, are you too busy? What's going on? Or are you just thinking, nah, everything's fine and being nonchalant about it. It's not good enough. Meanwhile, they're doing okay, but I'm lucky in this case because they are oncidiums. And you know, they are robust. You get smaller growths, but they will bounce back. Roots are growing and uh, soon they'll be in the media and we'll be okay. But what if it happens to a catacetum? And what if it happens over an extended period of time? You've lost the orchid. That to me is just like, I point the finger at myself and I go, what are you doing? Why are you fussing around with your orchids every day and yet this, this happens? It's not good enough. The same with being too lackadaisical about flushing, the flushing technique. I have lost, and I'm gonna read it from the tag, this is my speciosum, Paphiopedilum speciosum. Just an example, because I'm going to show you. I've lost Paphiopedilum hung shengbei, crossed with Xingying makassar, crossed with Xingying web. Because I just flushed aggressively. I wasn't cautious, I wasn't careful, it was just stupid. These little apex here, when I flush, normally with every other orchid, I flush all the way up to the base of the orchid, and let the water drain and repeat. These can't take it, especially the mottled leaves ones that are the lime green with the dark mottling. I'm not talking about the dark mottled ones. They are much more robust and much more forgiving. But the fleshier kind of foliage paths in semi-hydro, I cannot be flushing all the way up to the top, which would bring the water up to here and let the water drain. And this happened in the mid of summer. No matter about drying out quickly, it's just not on. Carelessness, negligence. As well here, when it comes to pests, yes, isn't that pretty? She is in spike, my Dendrobium alexandrae, crossed with polysema, woohoo. Pests, is this negligence or is this me not knowing how to deal with these pests that seem to love my dendrobiums. This is the newest, one of the newest growths this year. I still have the leaves, but barely. And I'm wiping them down after I realized that this dendrobium was being attacked as well. I'm wiping them down with, you know, insecticidal soap. But negligence. Setting back and just assuming, oh, it's going to be okay because there's nothing there. Prevention is better than cure. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So that makes me cross about myself. But there's more. This one is sort of segues in from the last point when I talk about orchid demise. I don't like losing an orchid and I've lost so many and it could be from pests, again, even though I think I've got it covered, or I don't even see them and they take the orchid out so fast. And then I mess up and then I try to save them. So here are all my little ICU orchids. I have two pieces of the purple gem Aida, to the left, and then my little freckles. So there's not just the pests, there's me as well, the orchid demise, the whole rigmarole of trying to save an orchid, um, I find it very stressful and very upsetting. As you know, if you've been on my channel since the beginning, you will know I've lost the unicorn, a very special orchid as well, a fowl, even though it was a complex hybrid, but still not a good thing. And then there's weather. It can be too cold, it can be too wet, and it can be too windy. I can have freak winds coming through. I have the right climate for about eight months of the year and then four months of the year. It's what brought me to making this video and putting the list together of all the frustrations and 
anxieties I'm going to be going through in the coming months because my Kolmanara Mas I read here, she should not be living outside at all. But I didn't think she would become a beast like she is now. And that's not even with the spikes yet. I can't have her inside. I don't have the space. So weather, was that a right decision to make? Could I have done better? Could I have thought this whole thing through a little bit more constructively instead of just going all ninja on, I want another orchid collection. Let me show you another weather accident. Now we're facing south. And this is my Vanda Chao Praia. And I don't have a massive, expansive, spacious patio to allow for a gust of wind to sweep through and gather strength to such a degree that it would knock over a wrought iron plant stand on three feet. But I've had it this year where it's happened twice that the wind has swept through from the north behind us and knocked this plant stand over with my chao praia on it and my papilionanthe. I got away with it, I thought. Luckily, the angraecums weren't affected because while the stand was much closer, depending on the angle of the sun, it was much closer there, it was the hedge that protected the whole plant and the frame of the iron stand crashing down on my Crestwood Tomorrow Star over there. And it was a split second, a split second of some freak wind. And behind me is a building. The house is behind me, actually protecting from that wind. And after all these years, even though she's never bloomed for me, she's cracked the crown here. The stem is broken. It's not the right time of year for me to assess whether she's going to continue growing. I have no idea. But here's the thing, years and years and years, you're fighting, then you get a hailstorm. Oh, all right, okay, you get a bit of leaf damage. Hey, I grow outside for most part of the year. No biggie, bit of hail damage on my leaves here. Okay, it's annoying, all right, whatever. When you think you've done everything for your orchids, and then that happens. I was actually really lucky nothing happened to the angraecums in the back there. And then a couple of days later, I see this and I'm going, oh, well, beep, insert, word. She is growing new roots now, right up on the top here. So I don't know if she's trying to save herself or what's going on because she has plenty of roots. But still, that panic moment, it's, it's like so, your heart stops. So when it gets windy, I'm on edge. I'm always on edge. I'm up and down, up and down, like a yo-yo, checking my orchids. Are you okay? Are you okay? Turn my back, walk back into the house, and bam, I hear a slam. It's sometimes I'm just like, no, I can't do this anymore. Let me show you another example. So we're back in my blooming alley, but I want to show you how narrow the space is, how protected it is. I have trellises, I have curtains, and all this business. The fires stood here. We'll go back to the fires now. So here's my gorgeous fires. Also belongs into the category of frustration that I don't have the climate to keep it as gorgeous as it could be, but it, it's ticking over. It's huge, as you can tell. And in that protected space, there was one time it was a bit windy and I thought, oh my goodness, Here's me, I'm jumping up off the couch again. I can see what's about to happen. I had two spikes in the beginning of the season. First time this would ever give me two spikes and I really actually wanted to enjoy them. I was thrilled. And then I got and picked up the pot. I thought I had a good grip on it. Took one step in that moment, in that little confined space that looks pretty protective. From the east, a gust of wind came and knocked me forward, fires, pot, everything. You can see my cymbidium got the fixed pot. <laughs> Oops, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that, that snapped, that pot, and I fixed it, and I've got some stuff on the inside, you know, to make it watertight. 
hot and all. A gust from the east and I have a massive head. How is that even possible? And that's when you think, if I had just stayed sat watching my orchid anxiously, would it have been okay if I had just let it go? I could have sat there and watched it and watched it and sort of gone, no, do something, do something. And then you're going, no, don't do it, don't do it. And then you actually do it because you don't want to regret afterwards not having done something and then something goes wrong. Three days, <laughs> I was angry for three days. I know this might sound silly, but I'm wondering if anybody out there, if that resonates with them as well. So my weather conditions, as much as I love the circumstances that I have, wow, I'm telling you, it makes me wonder, why am I doing this? But there's more. So I don't really have an example of this. I could pull out everything and how about funds? I could pull out my media. I, if, if you haven't seen my Orchid Arsenal video, then I'll link it down below. Media, water. In my case, I need an RO system. How about the fertilizer? How about the entire maintenance and care and the cost of this hobby? Especially in times like these, that we are experiencing in 2020. Spain is about to go into another, well, we've already got curfew, but it's gonna get worse. And then there's the question of wanting more orchids, more repiculous lalias. I mean, I have 15, but what's wrong with 33? I just picked that number out randomly. But yeah, funds. It's, um, debilitating sometimes. And I'm thinking about, you know, the money I am spending in order to get my infrastructure right for indoors, new shelves, using the electricity in order to uh, give them some light on gloomy days. All of that, it's pretty draining. And I'm just going to be perfectly honest. This is what my channel is about. I don't do, you know, fluff and poof and if something goes wrong, you will know. If I've done something wrong, you will know. If I can correct it and tell you how to correct it, you will know. If I can't, you will know. But it's the same thing when it comes to this hobby. It is not cheap. And then I'm thinking, especially in times like this, I mean, the last two years, everything was great, you know? But now, and I'm wondering, what am I doing? Can I even sustain this? I want to, but you have to, well, I have to take a good hard look and think about these things. I can't help it. They call me a positive pessimist or something like that, that I'm always thinking doom and gloom and I'm always looking at worst case scenario, but hey, that is my nature. I try to cover my bases, which in my orchid collection, to be honest, you know, nothing lasts forever. I didn't cover my bases sometimes with the orchids that I bought and I'm paying the price for that now because I see some of them str struggling sometimes and some have died because I just couldn't keep up. But yeah, I have to think about these things. I can't just wash them away and pick up the camera and say everything is hunky-dory and you know, 90% of the time it is, but it's the 10% that make a big difference and I just wanted to bring that up. This is an expensive hobby. And then you wonder in times like these, what am I doing? And then I just have another thought. The attachment factor to the orchids. The loss, it, it affects me. It bothers me. And I'm showing mostly the fowls because almost all of them were gifts. If I hadn't bought one mini fowl for myself because I needed to replace another one, most of them were gifts. So that's special. That means a lot. And then people say, oh, Nina grows orchids. And then they ask about their orchid. And then I have to say, it died. And I'm like, I, I, I just feel terrible. It, I mean, you can say it's embarrassing. 
yeah, to a degree, but I feel more terrible at having lost the gift than I have at being honest to say, I, got, I, I, I killed it. So the attachment factor is, do I really want to do this to myself? The stress about, am I going to make her happy? Um, is she going to come through? This one came from the orchid room. I, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Not only is that is she a fantastic hybrid of little freckles that I might be losing because she has these little freckles on the side, but she comes with a double whammy of fragrance, which is a gorgeous citrusy, like with a bit of a hint of acid lemon. It's delicious. Imagine if I were to lose her. Imagine what I would have to say to the orchid room. I, I, I don't know. I'll sit in a corner and rock for a few days before I come out with that. I don't know. Imagine if I lose the Maxima. Now everybody can say, well, you can buy a new Maxima, but that's not the point. These things become part of you, at least in my case. My orchids are a part of me. It's why I get up in the morning. Not only I have pets and stuff as well, but, you know, especially in times like these, they are a big, big, huge part of my life. And there is a relationship. And if I don't do right by them, I'm, I, I struggle. I really do. Sounds dramatic. Sounds like, oh, come on, get over it. But no, they are a fundamental part of my existence. And I said to myself many years ago, I will never get attached to anything again. Thierry Henry is my last little haven. After that, I'm done. Now I have a bird. You can hear them in the background. And I have 300 plus orchids and they are all important to me. And oops, yeah, I've done it again. And then as a bonus, if you want to call it as such, there's life. This is my third collection. Granted, in the beginning, when I was young and in Kenya, I didn't think I was collecting orchids. I was collecting beautiful plants that grew in trees and bloomed. But I wanted these orchids then in my life when I came to Europe. And I started with another collection prior to the internet purchasing opportunities. And they were mainly fowls and cattleyas that I could find and source locally in clay pots and in bark. And then life happened and I had to let them go. My choice, in hindsight, it was the wrong choice, but at the time, you do what you do, and life throws you a curveball. This is my third collection. Is life going to come in the way again? I ask myself that, and I live with that daily. So I have done some kind of, let's say, backup plan in order to at least have some orchids in case life throws me another curveball and all this has to go. I have my Rapiculus Lelia collection, I have my Maxima, and I have my Golf Green Hair Pig. I have my Alexandre crossed with Polysema. And if everybody else has to go because life, then at least I think I can continue with a very, very mini, mini collection, but I can still grow orchids. So it is very sad that sometimes I just don't live in the moment and can enjoy what I've got myself surrounded by here. But I've always got this niggling in the back of my head. Something is going to happen. I have a plan B in place and I think the orchids I just mentioned, I think that in a, another location I could take care of them. But you see, I just wonder, is it worth it? And I don't try to be all boo-hoo. This is not what this video is about. But this is just an honest, honest dive into my mind about my collection. How much it means to me. How I look forward to each and every bloom. Even though I get annoyed at mislabeled orchids, I consider the reason, there must be a reason why that one then came into my life. I might never know the reason. Doesn't matter. But, you know, sometimes these things happen. You want something, but you get something else. 
So I just thought I would share that with you. I don't know if you found that interesting, if it triggered you to think, oh, yeah, I've got it the same vibe sometimes. I don't know. I'm not going to ask you to expose yourself in the comments below, but if something resonates with you in what I've talked about, it would be interesting to know because I do feel like sometimes I'm on my own with my thoughts like these and they, they're not really usually shared. So I'm just going to see if I break the mold and say, look, sometimes should I quit? And the answer, of course, is a big no. No way. While I can, I'll keep going. But I have all these other things going on, cruising through my mind. And I just wanted to share that with you. And I hope that uh, it didn't ruin anybody's day or anybody's passion about their hobby. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very, very much from Dinard Blue Heaven and Chunye Good Life. So a heavenly hobby contributing to a very good life. Thank you very, very much for listening, for watching, and I'll see you hopefully <laughs> next time. Take care. Bye.